Good afternoon. I am Dr. Vivek Kumar Sharma, Professor in Mathematics, Jagannath University, Jaipur. I am going to present a lecture on maxima and minima of multivariable functions. So, all of you are aware with the terms maxima and minima of single variable which you have studied in the class 12th. <coughs> now, in today's class, we will discuss the maxima and minima of the multivariable functions. It means the functions, it means the functions which have variables, uh, independent, uh, in, uh, de independent variables more than one. So, we can define max minima of this function, this type of the function as uh, if f x is a function where x has the n component is said to have a local minimum at the point x equals to x star if f of x star is always less than or equals to function of f of x star plus minus h for all the sufficiently small n values of the h. So, uh, we can depict this mathematical fact uh, in graphical manner also. Suppose, there is a graph of uh, this function, we have taken this graph arbitrarily. If we consider a particular point capital X star here, which has so many components. In this case, f of X star value is here. So, in the neighborhood of X star, again we can uh, find that the function's value is always less than the neighboring points. So, this point will be the point of minima. This point is the point of minima, function's value is minimum and point is known as the minima. In the similar fashion, we can define the uh, maxima of the multivariable function. If function f x equals to uh, f of x 1, x 2, f 2, x n uh, with having the n components or n depending n variables is said to have a local maxima at this point. If f of x star is always greater to f of x star plus minus h for all sufficiently small values of the h. Now, before going to study the maxima minima of several variable functions, we are going to some define some terms which will be used in the later study. So, first term is definiteness of a matrix. If we consider a matrix of order n having n number of rows and n number of columns and uh, A matrix is defined as A 1 1, A 1 2, A 1 n and this way. Suppose, if we consider the leading minus of this matrix capital A as A 1 1 is determinant of first component A 1 1, second leading minor A 2 as, as determinant of the components A 1 1, A 1 2, A 2 1, A 2 2. Similarly, the third leading minor A 3 is the determinant of uh, A11, A21, A31, A21, A22, A23 and A31, A32, A33 and uh, going on last is the main uh, determinant of the given matrix A of A n cross n. Then this matrix A will be of positive definite if all these leading minors of the positive sign. This matrix A will be of negative definite if it has of the sign minus 1 to the power z. It means all the leading minors of the alternating sign starting from minus sign from first matrix, then positive sign, negative sign. It means all, all odd uh, order leading minors of negative sign and uh, even leading minors are of positive sign. So, in that case, matrix will be of negative definite. Suppose, some of the leading minors are 0 and some of the positive definite positive sign. In that case, this matrix A is said to be of semi positive definite. And if in the case, when the matrix leading minors of the given matrix capital A are of the sign minus 1 to the power z and rest are of 0, in that case, the matrix will be of semi negative definite. And if minus or leading minus of the matrix A does not follow 
any of the mentioned above mentioned rule in that case matrix is said to be of indefinite nature. Next term is the Hessian matrix. Suppose we have a function depending on the n component x1, x2, x3 up to xn. In that case, the Hessian matrix of this function f is defined as h is equals to del 2 f upon del of xi del of xj. It means Hessian matrix is the matrix of all second order partial derivatives of the function f with respect to the all variable involved in the variable. Okay. So, uh, for example, <coughs> if we confine or restrict the number of variables up to 2, it means a function is dependent only two variable x1 and x2. Therefore, its Hessian matrix will be of the form del 2 f upon del of x1 square, del 2 f upon del of x1 del of x2, del 2 f upon del of x2 del x1, del 2 f upon del of x2 square. So, this is the Hessian matrix of the function. Now, if we wish to check the definite definiteness of a following matrices, so we will check the definiteness of the matrix. We consider a matrix A that is uh, given values of the matrix are given as 5, 2, 2, 1. So, first of all we find the first leading minor A1 as the first comp determinant of first component that is 5 and we can easily see this is positive. Similarly, we can find the second leading minor of the matrix A, A2 as determinant of 5, 2, 2, 1. If we solve this, expand this determinant, then we have 5 minus 4 is equals to 1, which is again positive. So, we can say both the leading minors A1 and A2 are positive. Therefore, matrix A is of positive definite definiteness or of nature. If we want to find the nature of matrix B, then we have to find out the first leading minor B1 that will be nothing but the determinant of the first determinant of the first element A11 that is minus 5 and uh, this is less than 0. Again, we will find the second leading minor B2 of the given matrix, then this is the determinant of A11 positions element that is minus 5, A12 that is 2, A21 that is 2 again and A22 that is minus 3. Now, when we expand this determinant, then we have 15 minus 4 that is equals to 11 and is positive. So, we find B1, first leading minor is negative and second leading minor is positive. Therefore, B matrix is of negative definite, negative definite in nature. Similarly, we can find the definiteness of the or nature of the matrix C for to find out the nature of matrix C, we will find the first leading minor C1, C1 is again determinant of the first element A11 positions, A11 positions uh, element that is 8. So, we can say it is 8 again and greater than 0 positive C2. Now, we are going to calculate the C2 second leading minor. So, directly we can say this is X, uh, determinant of 8, 4, 4, 2. On expanding the determinant, we have 16 minus 16 that is 0. So, we, we find that the first leading minor is positive and second leading minor is 0. So, matrix C is semi positive definite, semi positive definiteness. Uh, now, we are going to check the nature of the matrix B, D. So, we find the first leading minor D1 that is minus 8 and less than 0. Now, D2 second leading minor, so it will be directly can be written as minus 16 
and plus 16 again 0. So, first leading minor is less than 0 negative, second is 0. So, this implies the matrix D is of semi negative definiteness. And at last matrix E, if we consider the nature of the matrix E, so first we find the first leading minor that is determinant of 6 A11 positions element greater than 0. Then we find the second leading minor that is determinant of 6 to 8 1. If we expand the, this determinant then 6, my, 6 into 1 is 6 minus 16 is equals to minus 10 which is less than 0. So, we find that the first leading minor is greater than 0, second is of negative, this is not following the any rule which we have mentioned earlier. Therefore, the nature of the matrix E is of indefinite. So, in this way we can find the nature and definiteness of the any given matrix. Now, we will know what is the necessary condition for a function, multivariable function to have an extreme point. So, we can state this necessary condition as if f f x is a has a extreme point at x, x equals to x star, where x is a multivariable function having the n component and if first order partial derivatives of this function f x does exist, then the first order partial derivatives with respect to the all components of the function should be equals to 0 at the point x equals to x star. This is completely parallel definition to the necessary condition of the functions of single variable. Now, the sufficient condition uh, sufficient condition for a stationary point x star to be an extreme point is that the matrix of second order partial derivatives means Hessian matrix evaluated at the point x equals to x star is positive definite when x equals to x star is a point of local minima and negative definite when x equals to x star is a point of local maxima. These are the necessary and sufficient conditions of a multivariable function. We would like to find the extreme points of a multivariable function using the necessary and sufficient conditions. For this we are going to take an example. We have to find the extreme points of a function multi of multivariable function f x equals to x 1 cube plus 3 x cube x, uh, x 2 cube plus 2 times of x 1 square plus 4 times f x square plus if, if they do exist. Solution, first of all we use the necessary condition which states that for having the extreme points the given function first order partial derivative should be equals to 0. It means del f upon del of x 1 should be equals to 0. Similarly, del f upon del of x 2 should be equals to 0. So, one by one we are going to differentiate the given function with respect to x and x 1 and x 2 respectively. So, on differentiating given function f of x with respect to x 1 partially we have 3 times of x 1 square plus 4 times of x 1 and we equate this equals to 0. Similarly, on differentiating the given function with respect to x 2 partially, we have 3 times of x 2 square plus 8 times of x 2 is equals to 0. If we take x 1 as a common from equation first equation, then we have x 1 into 3 times of x 1 plus 4 equals to 0 and if we take x 2 as common term, 
in the second equation then we have x2 into 3 of x2 plus 8 equals to 0. Now, in the first equation the product of two terms are equal to 0, therefore either first term is 0 or second term is 0. If we equate second term is 0 then it gives minus 4 by 3. Similarly, in the second equation the product of two terms are equal to 0, therefore either first term is 0 or second term is 0. If we equate the second term equal to 0 then we have x2 is equal to minus 8 by 3. So, we have two pairs of the values therefore, the possible extreme points of the given functions are 0, 0, 0 minus 8 by 3, then minus 4 by 3, 0 and minus 4 by 3 minus 8 by 3. We have taken x 1 and pair with the x 2 as a 0, the we have the first uh, root, then again x 1 as 0, x 2 second value of minus 8 by 3, so second root, then uh, we take the second value of x 1 minus 4 by 3 paired it with the uh, first value of the x 2 that is 0, the we get the second uh, third possible extreme point and uh, <coughs> stationary point and uh, at last we paired the second values of the x 1, x 2, we get the extreme point minus 4 by 3 minus 8 by 3. So, there are four stationary points where the function can achieve or have the extreme values, it means maxima or minima. Now, we are going to use the second sufficient condition to find the maxima or minima of the given function. For this, we again differentiate or find the second order partial derivatives of the given function. So, first order partial derivatives are del f upon del of x 1 is equals to this one and del of f upon del of x 2 equals to this one. So, difference to find the second order partial derivative del 2 f upon del of x 1 square is equals to 6 times of x 1 plus 4. Similarly, del 2 f upon del of y del of x is equals to 0. <coughs> Next, del 2 f upon del of y square is equals to, sorry, not y square, but x 2. is again 0 or finally, del 2 f upon del of x 2 square is equals to 6 times of x 2 plus 8. So, we have four components of second order partial derivatives. So, we can write the hessian matrix of the given matrix given function as 6 x 1 plus 4, 6 x 1 plus 4, 0, 0, then 6 x 2 plus 8, 6 x 2 plus 8, this is the Hessian matrix. If we wish to find out the nature or definiteness of this Hessian matrix, then we have to find out h 1 that will be 6 of x 1 plus 4 and h 2 will be equals to 6 of x 1 plus 4 multiplied by 6 x 2 plus 8. Now, we compute these h values of h 1 and h 2 at the stationary points which we have calculated earlier that are 0, 0. 0 minus 8 by 3, 
then minus 4 by 3 0 and minus 4 by 3 minus 8 by 3. So, first of all we are going to calculate h 1 h 2 at 0 0. So, h 1 at 0 is 4 and h 2 at 0 x 1 x 2 both values 0 is 4 into 8 is equals to 32. So, we find h 1 is again 0, h 2 is again 0 at 0 0. Therefore, we can say the matrix H is positive definiteness at the point 0 0. So, according to the sufficient condition, the point 0 0 is the point of minima. It means function will have minimum value at the point 0 0. Similarly, we will calculate the values of h 1 at h 2 at the point stationary point 0 comma minus 8 by 3. So, value of the h 1 and h 2 at 0 comma minus 8 by 3 point. h 1 is equals to since h 1 contains only x 1 term and we are assigning x 1 is equals to 0. So, h 1 is equals to again 4. Now, in h 2 we are assigning x 1 as 0. So, this term becomes 4 and x 2 as minus 8 by 3. So, 6 times into minus 8 by 3 plus 8. We can say this is 2 minus 16 plus 8 is minus 8 or minus 8 into 4 is minus 32. So, we find that h 1 here h 1 is positive and h 2 is negative. So, it is not following the definite rules according to this the point 0 comma minus 8 by 3 is of indefinite. So, function will neither have the maximum value or nor minimum value. So, 0 comma 8 by 3 is the is a saddle point. So, we can say this point 0 comma minus 8 by 3 is a saddle point. Saddle point is a point where function has the stationary point, but does not attain extreme values it means maximum or minimum value. Now, finally, we have to compute the values of h 1 and h 2 at these two points minus 4 by 3 comma 0 or minus 4 by 3 comma minus 8 by 3. So, we can decide the nature of the Hessian matrix at these two points. So, on the next slide we are going to calculate h 1 at the point minus 4 by 3 comma 0 minus 4 by 3 comma 0. So, h 1 is equals to 6 times of minus 4 by 3 plus 4. So, on simplification we have this is minus 8 plus 4 is equals to minus 4 less than 0 h 2 is equals to nothing but 6 times of h 1 plus 4 and 6 times of x 2 plus 8. So, assigning x 1 as minus 4 by 3 and x 2 as 0, we have minus 4 into 8 minus 32. So, both the values are negative. It means h 1 is also negative, h 2 is also negative. Therefore, we can declare the point minus 4 upon 3 minus comma 0 is of indefinite. Therefore, minus 4 upon 3 comma 0 is a saddle point, is a saddle point. At last, we calculate the value of h 1 h 2 at the point minus 4 by 3 minus 8 by 3. So, h 1 is equals to 6 times of minus 4 by 3 plus 4. So, we can compute it as <coughs> Uh, minus 4, 
then H2 is equals to minus 4 by 3 into 6 plus 4 multiplied by 6 times of minus 8 by 3 plus 8. So, on simplification we have minus 4 multiplied by minus 8. So, it is 32 that is positive. So, finally, we find here H 1 first leading minor is negative is negative and second leading minor H 2 is positive is positive. This implies the point minus 4 upon 3 comma minus 8 upon 3 is a point of local maxima. It means nature at this point, nature of the Hessian matrix at this point is of uh, negative definite. Therefore, this point is a point of local maxima function will attain maximum value at, the, at this point minus 4 y. So, finally, we can conclude that out of the four stationary points, two points are the saddle point, one point 0 comma 0 is point of minima and other point minus 4 upon 3 comma 8 by 3 is a point of maxima. So, using the necessary and sufficient conditions of multivariable maxima minima of multivariable functions, we find the extreme points of a given function having or dependent on more than one variable. So, in this class, it, uh, the topic completes.